Hey guys, sorry for not posting in quite a while. I had a lot of schoolwork. Recently, I've been working on a watch winder that I've wanted to make quite a while back. Uh, for those of you who don't really know what a watch winder is, a watch winder only does one thing, which is rotate a watch in a certain orientation so that it can continue running. Behind the back cover of an automatic watch, there's a half circle shaped piece of metal that spins in a circle. While rotating, it simultaneously winds up an internal spring. Since we normally wear watches on our wrist, the back and forth motion of our arm swaying keeps the watch wound, which is exactly why it's called an automatic. Daily use of this kind of mechanical watch keeps them automatically wound without needing batteries. So before we get to the build, I just really quickly wanted to say that I did have some inspiration from other sources. There are a few other people who have also created watch winders, but I kind of wanted to put my own spin on it. For example, Fugitech, Fugitech, sorry if I'm butchering that but I watched Fugatech's video to see how he did it. And I also drew a lot of inspiration from Greg Powell's video and his design. I'll have their links in the description below if you guys wanna check out uh, where I got my inspiration from. So the reason that I wanted to create this watch winder is pretty simple. There are three main reasons. So the first one being that I wanted to learn about Arduino and more about microprocessors. The second reason being I wanted to have a nice display for my collection and to keep them wound when I'm not wearing them. The last reason being I didn't want to have my watches just laying around when I wasn't using them. So here's the parts, let's get on to the build. Okay, so first starting off here, I have the base. Mainly for the base, I really wanted to do one thing in particular, and similarly to Greg Powell's design, I wanted to add bearings so that the wheel inside would spin very smoothly. Essentially, I have my wheel that's gonna hold the watch in the center, and then it's gonna spin smoothly and freely inside here. And so I have to get these bearings to fit on the frame. To start off here, you can see that this side is a lot deeper than the left side, and you'll understand why in a second. But in order to install these bearings, you also notice that there's kind of a notch here. It's to match up the notch with this white piece, which also has a notch. And so basically the notch sits inside the bearing and acts as a bearing cover. So I have to just line it up like so, that way it doesn't slip. And then just take my screw and screw it in. And then I just repeat the process for the other side. And it broke. <laughs> All right, well, now I gotta go, oh, jeez. Now I gotta go print another one, so I will be right back. Okay guys, so I'm back with the part. Here it is, a new one, not broken this time. So same goes, put in the bearing. So now you'll see, spins, spins, and then creates about a one millimeter gap between the wheel and the case. Okay, so the next part is the wheel insert. So I have this piece here. It's where the watch is gonna be sitting, the watch face. So it's gonna be wrapped around the watch insert like this. Screw it together like this. Have it like that. Find the match up the hole. Spin it around until <laughs> it fits. So like this, perfect. And then you screw in the other side. Sorry. Keep it in frame. So this is the first part of the watch insert. Next part, I have the adjustment knob. Uh, you'll notice that I already press fit a hex nut in there. Fits like that. Next piece, I have a plate here. You'll see why I need it in a second. The reason why I have this bigger hole on the side is to make sure that I have room for the plate to move. So in case I need to make adjustments, uh, that way I don't keep the knob pressed down too tight.
Don't want to have them too tight either. There we go. Much better. That's a lot looser. I can tighten this down. Got this insert here. So the reason why I added that hex nut earlier is so that I can adjust this. Oh my gosh, please. Come on. There we go. So now you can adjust it very small amounts. You're going to wrap your bracelet around the insert and then you can adjust it accordingly. Clockwise to go up, counterclockwise to go down. Lastly, I have these parts where I pressed in some magnets and you'll see what they're used for in a second. But same process as before, you just screw them on. The reason why I did this That way I can make sure to match them up. So these magnets are in, right? So now that's sitting in here in the base, I can match it up with the magnet. So that way it won't rotate on its own. To explain really quickly what I'm trying to do here, I have my wheel, I have my base, the wheel sits inside the base like this rolls on the bearings. There's going to be a motor in the back that spins this and that kind of action is going to keep the automatic watch wound. So here it is, my watch inside the insert and then it's going to sit in the wheel. So the insert goes in the wheel here and then it's going to sit inside the watch winder. So the last two pieces to the build, aside from the electronics, I have my base here and then I have my front cover. The base has a cutout for the motor, the stepper motor, and there's also some space for the Arduino here. And then in the front, uh, the way that I wanted mine to be designed is I wanted to have a button in the front. Okay, so I'm going to use this switch. It's a latching switch. I'm going to put it on the front. Like I showed you earlier, there is a big cutout here. Uh, this is to accommodate for the switch size. If I put on my cover here, there's got to be space for the switch to fit. So that's why I made this side longer. So here I have the back portion of my wash winder. I have this housing and essentially I bought this pack of power plug adapters. And this is actually acting as the place where you're going to plug in in order to turn the wash winder on. I'm going to place the piece like this and then place it inside the housing and you'll notice that this sticks out enough for me to plug in a 5 volt cable so that my watch winder will be powered. After that, basically slap in the motor and then have my Arduino run it. Originally I had planned to include how I built the circuit, uh, the parts I used for them, other such things, and I actually already pre-recorded all the footage for all of it. but. After putting it into my editing software, I realized that it was going to take way too much time and the video would be way too long, so I'm actually going to cut that part out. But I will be including the breakdown of the circuit on my Thingiverse page. I will also include other things that are important to the build, so things like a parts list. There's going to be a lot more information on my Thingiverse page if you guys do want to try to build this. Okay, so essentially this is the final build. You need to put the wheel inside the base. The reason being so because uh, I wanted to create a design where the screws weren't sticking out on the front. So I made these screw mounts on the front cover here and then they correspond to the mounts on the back. And so this way I can screw it in from the back and the front will be completely flush and there won't be any screws sticking out. I have to stick the, uh, the wheel in first because obviously the lip here covers the wheel. If I didn't do that, then I couldn't put the wheel in. So I have this and then I need to get my screws, put them in the top and then screw them in. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so the next step in the process is I want to hide my wires in here, so the way that I'm gonna be doing that is I'm gonna stick the wires into this hole here, have them sit like this, and that way 
everything's hidden. And then I can try to jam as many wires. The last step, I put my Arduino here, my driver board here. And so I can just line everything up like this and then put my stepper motor in and stick in everything. The hardest part is matching up the stepper motor with the wheel, so you have to make sure you rotate it. And then like that, it's pretty much done. You just have to make sure that your wires aren't getting caught. But yeah, after that it's just screwing the last screws into the four sides. So here it is, the final product, everything put together. I really liked how it turned out. It's got a super clean finish. I went with the minimal aesthetic because I personally really like the colors white and tan together. So I decided to make my watch wind or so, but I think it turned out really clean. There are still a few issues that I'm still working out. For example, sometimes the wheel gets caught, especially on the counterclockwise rotation. There are a few ways that I try to fix it, but it's still a long process. A few things that I would improve for the next version Ideally, I would get a stronger stepper motor. That way it can overcome the friction of the wheel turning inside the wheelbase. And that's the really big main issue. Other than that, there are just like a few small other issues here and there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and this is my version of the Watchwinder.